untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Pack 1, pick 1, our rare, Sarith the Viper's Fang, quite strong, giving all our attacking creatures essentially death touch, and giving untapped creatures hexproof. What else do we have? Vengeful Strangler can be okay, especially in a sacrifice deck, where we can transform it into the Grasp. And at common, cards I like, Hobbling Zombie, has been quite decent for me. Candle Grove Witch, fine to drop. Um, and then there's some good green cards with the Shadow Beast Siding. And uh, Rejuvenator's decent too. I think I'll be taking the rare here just to see how it plays out. Although, a little bit sad that I'm passing uh, some good green cards too here with the Siding especially. Second pick. All right, we've got a decision to make because there's two great uncommons in green, Naturalists and Dawnheart Wardens, and we have to decide which direction to go in. And uh, based on our first pick, we could still go either way. Uh, based on our first pack, we did also have a Candle Grove Witch. I don't think we pass any amazing red cards. I guess there was a werewolf, the 2-5 at common. So this is close. Between the two, I don't think I can really make a huge distinction. Probably go with the Naturalist just because it's a cheaper card. And there's not as many amazing 2-drops as there are 3-drops. But uh, yeah, tough call. Take the Naturalist here. Third pick, we're seeing pretty late Blade Stitch Scab, blue black, probably the best performing color pair so far in the format. So, kind of surprised to still see the Scab here. No white cards I'm super excited about, patrols, kind of whatever. Barrage, also not a card you want many copies of. And then Sentry's fine, better in green white than red green. Still a playable 2-drop. Uh, Crasher's more a blue-red spells card. So the decision here is, do we completely pivot and take a Blade Stitch Cap? Do we play it safe with an Evolving Wilds? Or do we take like a Sentry as kind of a boring safe pick? I guess I'll take the Evolving Wilds, which could still easily end up in our deck as some mana fixing. But definitely keep my eyes open for blue-black. Fourth pick. Not seeing any amazing werewolf cards. There is Burn the Accursed, which is fine at 5 mana as removal. We are seeing a lot of white cards too, though, between Search Party Captain and Join the Dance for green-white especially. So there's something to be said for those as well. But uh, yeah, we could just take Burn the Accursed and stick to red-green for now. For at least one more pick and see where we end up. So no great red card. Another search party captain in white, as well as a beloved beggar. And then there's a duel for dominance in green. Not an amazing removal spell. Gets better if we can enable Coven. Kind of tempted by this search party captain. There's also some good blue cards, especially Baithook Angler, Abomination, and Consider. So blue also seems open. I think I'm gonna try the captain. Duel's just kind of replaceable in terms of removal. It's no clear shot. Another Baithook Angler in blue, another Burn the Accursed in red, Timberland Guides, kind of whatever. I guess we'll take another red removal spell, could end up a red-white, who knows. So black so far seems to be cut off the most. This pack doesn't have anything amazing left. Couple playable blue cards, Amalgam, 
and dissipate. In white, there's a candle tramp, which can be playable, especially in a more controlling build. And a clarion cathars, which is good at enabling coven. Not too excited about the neonates rush or the tapping at the window. So, yeah, between Cathar and Candle Tramp, it's a, a close call. Probably don't need much more removal if we're gonna end up red white, but I'll go for it. Now, take the Morning Patrol. Kind of surprised to see Novice Occultist eighth pick, given how cut off Black has been, and Occultist is pretty good in the Sacrifice decks. But uh, yeah, Patrol seems fine filler. And then we did wheel the Tavern Ruffian. Could also take a Cathar Commando as a fine two drop. Yeah, I don't know yet if I'm going to be green white or red white here. But it seems like white is the most open color so far. I guess I'll take the Commando. Commando does have a bit of synergy with werewolves as well, if we do pick up a few. You can just pass a turn, let it switch to knights, and then flash it in. So probably go with the Harrier over Timberland Guide. And then we might end up red-white. So patrol... Perforator and Sentry. Yeah, maybe should go with the patrol again. Probably gonna be white. Pump spell if we need it. Although Bounding Wolf is good if we end up with a couple of werewolves. Eh, I'll, I'll take the pump spell. Alright, so not super thrilled about our first pack. Had to kind of abandon our first two picks. But we'll see what the second pack has to offer. The good news is that we can still potentially switch between the three colors here. But I do want to end up, end up in a two-color deck. Well, that's a nice rare to open. Pack one, pick one, Brutal Cathar. A nice removal spell on a creature. Not really anything I'm too excited to wheel here. Maybe the Clarion Cathars or a third Burn the Accursed. Okay. Second pack has a Spell Rune Painter in it, which could be okay if we end up with more Incense and Sorceries. Currently, only really the Burn the Cursed were excited to play. There's another Harrier. Lunar Frenzy is a pretty decent comma trick. Gets better in a Werewolf deck, red-green. Could still be serviceable in red-white. Not sure how likely we are to wield the Frenzy if we take, like, the Spell Rune Painter. But, um... Uh, yeah, I could be convinced to try the Frenzy. Ooh. That's a late Briarbridge Tracker. Discard's awesome too. A 2-3, that's essentially a 4-3 Vigilance. That also makes a clue. There's nothing else in the pack that I'm really excited to play, so I'll take the Tracker. Don't know if that means we're switching to green-white all of a sudden. Well, green-white definitely seems open. Uh, Liberator, Dual Lands, Candlegrove Witch, Trapper, all cards I would happily play, even the Cavalry. Although I might just end up rare drafting. And then hoping to wheel one of the three. And this will also fix my mana in case I do want to splash a third color, maybe splash Burn the Accursed in green-white, or... Yeah, I guess there's no green cards really worth splashing. Maybe the tracker. 
Yeah, going all three colors seems sketchy, but we do have a Farmlands and Evolving Wilds now, which helps. The Sprout, better in black-green than green-white. Could still be playable. Not too excited about the duel, since our creatures are kind of small. So maybe this is a, a Ruffian over Harrier. Not quite sure what my colors are, but red-white seems the most likely at this point. Although I do like Eccentric Farmer. Yeah, the Soul Guide Griff is kind of whatever. Although I could use a bit of top end, I suppose. Any chance I'm red-green? I don't know, maybe I am. Farmer, Infiltrator, I think Farmer's better. I guess I could be red-green splashing white for Brutal Cathar. Which could still work out. How about I just take another Evolving Wilds for mana fixing here. And then I'll figure it out later. I don't really want to play the Bramble Armor if I can help it. Yeah, we'll see. Siding seems great, so definitely take that. And then we did wheel Cathars as well as Cavalry. So now I guess I'm leaning Cavalry. Go with my Burn the Cursed at 5. Shouldn't be too difficult to pick up some 4 mana plays. Yeah, kind of a weird spot to be in, like pretty split between 3 colors. Good news is we have a bit of fixing, so 2 colors and a splash is definitely feasible. I think I still prefer the 2 drop here, looking at our curve. Yeah, I don't think Coven is really a mechanic that you need to focus too much on. It kind of just happens naturally if you draft enough creatures. Probably want another Cavalry, since it's looking more and more like it's red-green splash white. Eh, fine pump spell, I guess. Well, well, well. Kind of sad I just crafted my full playset the other day, but uh, Ren and Seven, get in there. 40 gems. Can hope to wheel another siding. Well, that's the advantage of staying open, I suppose, until pack three. We can take a Ren guild free. And this pack has some goodies too. Light up the knights as well as a burly breaker, although I think we've got enough 5 drops now that I prefer the removal spell. Well, this is also worth splashing. So we can be red green, splash white for brutal Cathar and angel fire ignition. Liberator would also be awesome. So that would be my next pick. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. So looking at a Weaver as a good reach creature. There's also Jackal Lantern for fixing. Again, the Sprout could be great in theory. We do have a lot of creatures, but we're not filling the graveyard outside of like an Eccentric Farmer and Renan 7. So we would need a few more Graveyard fillers for that to work out, I think. Yeah, 
All right, it's easy liberator now. I th uh, yeah, there's also hauler, but again, we're pretty stacked on five drops. Jackal lantern would also be serviceable, but liberator is just an awesome two drop. Wow. Vanquish the Horde. Not a card that's easy to splash at double whites, but I think we should continue with the rare drafts theme. The other option would be a farmer, which would probably make my deck better overall. But can I resist the rare drafts? Eh, I don't think I can. And then uh, maybe I'll need the Ruffian here over Timberland Guide. I think we've got enough twos. Yeah, this draft has been quite a roller coaster. Raised Effigy can go. Got plenty of fours, plenty of fives, maybe cutting cavalry. So you kind of need a, a few more playables here. If I want to keep my white splash to a minimum. Yeah, the second farmer would definitely would have made the deck here as a way to find my splash colors as well. But uh, times are rough. Got to get those rares for the collection. Probably not going to play any of these. Maybe another ruffian. It is a good blocker to kind of leverage my planeswalker, I guess. Not going to splash any of these. This would be a good sideboard card in best of three, potentially. Oh wow. 11th pick Liberator, I'll take it. And a Jackal Lantern probably makes the cuts. Alright. Well, our fixing is pretty great now, with Double Lantern, Evolving Wilds times two, and Farmlands. So I could even play more white cards if I wanted to. So this is 42. Looking at my curve. So we've got two combo tricks with Might and Frenzy. Lots of fours and fives. Probably cutting one Ruffian. Or maybe cut one Cavalry. Hmm, this one's close. Could cut both, I suppose. This would be 40. Has me playing 13 creatures plus a Planeswalker. Decent amount of werewolves between Double Liberator, Naturalist, which also pumps regular wolves, including the Harrier. And then we've got Double Ruffian. So, a couple werewolf synergies. A Lantern is kind of just a cantrip. That uh, also fixes our mana. Then we've got a bit of removal with Light of the Night, double burn. Two pump spells. Cathar can be a removal. And then some big creatures. Probably can get away with one planes. Because if I reveal it with a farmer I can still put it in my hand, and if Ren finds it, I can also put it in my hand. So I don't think there's many situations where I get punished for only having one planes. And then in terms of red and green, pretty evenly split. Probably need a little bit more green for the double green cards, although I do have farmlands. So I guess seven 
six and then two evolving wilds plus two lanterns is plenty of mana fixing anything in the sideboard that we left out i think i have enough five drops where i don't need cavalry and same with a ruffian i think the other fours are probably better just to have a bit more diversity and then yeah as much as i like vanquish the horde Double white seems kind of tough. Alrighty. We're on the play. Yeah, fine hand, I guess. Nothing particularly exciting, but uh, good lands and spells, bit of mana fixing. So it should be alright. I think I'm okay playing at turn one since we're the one with the werewolves, so we don't want to find ourselves having to cast a spell when we don't want to. Upside of holding it is that maybe we get to snipe a card from the opponent's graveyard that they otherwise wouldn't play. This is sorcery speed. So... I could crack the lantern now to see if we can pick up a a two drop that I can still cast here. Alright, we did not. Hobbling zombie. I'm fine attacking into it. And then just playing Ruffian, or I could just play Ruffian and pass. Sure. And then, especially if I draw lands, I could pass a turn to transform and then maybe use my Burn the Accursed or play second Ruffian first. Discard two. All right. Well, in that case, probably my flashback card and burn the accursed, and then just play a ruffian next turn. Yeah, I don't think I need to get both uses out of it. Plus, with lantern, I might only get to cast it once anyway. So this is the easy one. And then between burn and light of the nights, burn has better synergy with my werewolves, I suppose. So maybe I discard light of the nights even though I cannot cast it at the moment. It looks like they might also have the uh, author removal spell. Sarath is nice. Might still play the author ruffian first. I guess the upside is once it does flip to knight, the ruffian will come into play on the knight side. So let's say my sequencing is Sarith, and then next turn I pick up my fifth land, I pass, maybe activate Harrier, and then it will transform, and then I can play a, a Smasher. Seems fine. Alright, so now it might be okay to activate Harrier and Smash, or I can again just play another Ruffian. And then make that play next turn. And Dreadhounds. Yeah, that's a scary one. They could activate Harrier on Dreadhound, attack with all. And then they probably trade a zombie for a Ruffian. Ruffian transforms into a 6-5. It's not ideal. I could just pass and then burn the Accursed in the opponent's turn. 
One diamond short of killing a Dreadhound, though. Yeah, I guess we'll try that, and then I can burn the Hobbling Zombie, and then maybe prevent the Dreadhound from blocking. Yeah, that's a card that punishes werewolves. That happens. This is sorcery speed. Not that it would s save my uh, smasher here. And eaten alive. So there's not much left of my zombie army here. Funan did have a lot of removal. There's attack. I guess we'll... Uh, hmm. Could block and burn the Dreadhound. Might be worth it, actually. And then I have enough if I use the Lantern to Ignition. Alright, that was a nice sequence at least. And then probably want to exile the Dreadhound already got exiled. The next best creature in their graveyard, probably the farmer. Unfortunate. So we're both in top deck mode now. It's time to draw those powerful rares. That's a good one. Is it worth playing as a question? Yeah, I mean, it comes into play as a werewolf side, so it's just a 3-3 first strike. And then it gets plus one, plus We even have the ability to flash back Light of the Night in this deck, since we actually have a Planeswalker. Interesting block. I see. Duel for Dominance, second main. Okay, they're putting that uh, zombie token to good use. I think we've drawn about the same amount of lands as our opponents, considering they played a couple eccentric farmers too. Opponents get a chump. Alright, sweet. So yeah, it was a very grindy game, lots of removal early on. But luckily our werewolves were able to get there in time. On the play, this uh, jackal lantern needs to do some heavy lifting. Only gonna get to cast one white card, but I think it's still a keep. Mm. 
Well, there we go. Easy peasy. Opponent does not have a two drop. I mean, Cathar's a three three first strike is still okay here. Abomination. Well, hello there. Let's diversify a little bit. Upside of putting counters on the brute is that it has that ward built in. So it might be a little bit more difficult to kill. Alright, Geist Wave. That's fine. Yeah, I think I'm happy enough drawing a card here. Although, that being said, my next turn is gonna probably be run and seven. Make a token. Although the downside is that they can kill run and seven by just sending both flyers. Yeah, worst case scenario is if they can kill the tree folk and then finish off my planeswalker. But what's the alternative? It's not like I can double spell. So that would be the upside of a drawing with Lantern, maybe finding another two or three mana play. Although then it also switches back to daytime, which maybe is a bad thing here. And what are the odds that the opponent plays a flashback card next turn? Not super high. Let's just draw right now. Alright, I guess it switches back already. Uh, let's get rid of the Abomination, I guess, so they cannot block. Okay. And then now our Renan 7 should be more likely to survive, at least. And then next turn I can go Liberator plus Ignition. Yeah, let's just hope to dodge removal here on the token. Silverbolt can kill Cathar. Okay, it's plus. That's a lot of lands. <laughs> can even flash back Light of the Night here. Uh, let me see. Opponent's at seven. Remove X loyalty counters to deal X damage, essentially. So that's three. So if I were to attack, they can kill Cathar, get their Falcon back. Although I could just burn the Cursed. Alternatively, I could Ignition to give this Trample, and then if they don't have anything else, this would Trample over the Abomination. But that seems a little risky if they do have other interaction here. So... Yeah, let's just attack. And then they're forced to chump.
and then I can cast this for x equals 1 to kill the interloper and play liberator. Well, achievement unlocked, flashback light of the night. Now the question is, do I block the zombie token? Probably. So if they don't have anything else, can just burn the hoarder. This goes up to a 7-7 at least. Could be quite a bit larger if we uh, put all our lands in play. Alright, I just want to use the alternate mode here. We're just going for achievements this game. Probably wanted to actually play one lane to have it be untapped, but that's okay. Okay, we've got our combo of Light of the Knights and Ren and Seven again. Could use more lands, but we do get to cantrip with Lantern. I'll try it. Three rares in our opening hand. Probably fine to just attack for two. Maybe cantrip with a lantern. Might want to cantrip after we attack. Again, we could hit another two drop. Maybe should have done this before playing my land in case we draw Evolving Wilds. There's two of those in the deck. And no need to light up the night uh, occultists. Yeah, really needs a land four. Not quite. This is still a sorcery. I guess I kill Cathars then. Oh, I guess it also makes it indestructible. Yeah, good points. I guess we could have done that. Killing Cathars still reasonable. Well, I guess I'll make that play now. But uh, they haven't had a great opportunity to use removal yet, so kind of expecting one here. Mm, 
No, no attacks. That's promising. Gives us time to draw out of it. Uh, for now, we're kind of just sitting here. I don't really want to attack because we don't need to be racing in this situation. Uh, on the other hand, it does let me potentially use the Lunar Frenzy, which would be pretty strong. And our point is at 12, so maybe it's still worth it. Alright, could have been worse. Double ambush. Alright, two for two. I guess we're happy with that, considering we have two werewolves in hand. Alright, might not be too late. So, Serith is our best blocker, since it also prevents Cathars from attacking. So I guess I'll start there. Alright, yeah, opponent's sending it. I guess they can flash back there. Reanimation spell, so at that point I want to probably kill the Guardian, which doesn't make a token when it enters. Is it time for Renan 7? It's pretty likely our opponent tries to kill it next turn. If they don't, it helps me hit future land drops. Or I could wait a turn and go for like a cavalry, which does a very similar job. Sure. And then our run will be slightly better protected. The hexproof, thanks to Sarath, is nice too. Alrighty, so time for run. Wouldn't be surprised if her opponent goes for an all-out attack, but I think I'm okay with that. Just this going face, so they want to draw a card. I mean, I could take the one, since I'm happy with the status quo. But there's probably no huge downside to blocking either. We could go for a flashback ignition on the tree folk here. Four. Would not leave enough mana to do anything else. So I think I save that for next turn. And then play like a ruffian. Yeah, the fact that it is hexproof thanks to Sarith means it's very safe to go for it.
All right, I guess they can uh, exile it too here. Sure. Yeah, they don't really want me making another tree folk. But at what cost? Okay, so between the two this is four mana. Sure. They can keep their first striker. Fifteen cards left. And then, uh, yeah, well, ignition token. And our opponent packs it in. This hand's good if we find land three for farmer and lantern in the meantime can also help. Ooh, vampires. The so next turn I could ignition thanks to Lantern, or can just go for the siding. So probably attack, Liberator, Light of the Knights. Collector. Yeah, glad we killed their vampire so they couldn't enable it. And our opponent's in trouble here. What's the best line available? A lantern. And then ignition on, let's say, the Liberator. If I ignition the 4-4, four four, it goes up to 6, but then they're not quite taking lethal. If I just activate Harrier, they take 8 down to 2, which is also reasonable. Although, kind of liking the ignition here. All right, and that'll do it. On the play, this one needs a bit of help. 
white mana for ignition, green mana for liberator, but our curve is kind of high. Yeah, I don't love this one. There is a sequence of draws where this could work out, but I think it's narrow enough where I would rather try a six card hand. So we've got three four drops, one of them probably has to go. Probably the Weaver, even though it does have more upside against flying creatures. We should be able to apply quite a bit of pressure ourselves between Tracker, all these four powered creatures. So I'm not too concerned about getting out raced in the air when we can just race ourselves. Nice line off the top. So I guess we're fine with the trade and play Shadow Beast Siding. Maybe they think they can transform Infiltrator because we're gonna sack Clue. Who knows? But seems like a good trade either way. Okay, we do need an extra land here for uh, Burn the Accursed. Probably don't want to trade now that Gisel's in play. So I could go Harrier, crack Clue to try and draw land. Still have extra power on the tracker thanks to our 4 4 token. So now I could burn the accursed their Dread Knight instead. And then offer the trade. How does Gisa work? So if Gisa dies, then it doesn't matter if it traded. So, um. Yeah, that seems fine. Kind of surprised they traded for Tracker instead of the token. Maybe they've got something that's more effective against the token, but they're not playing blue. So maybe they missed that interaction. Now, could activate Harrier on Ghoul, hit for four. Although I also kind of like adding more stuff to the board first, in case they top deck removal for my 4-4. Four -four. Currently it's daytime. Upside of Sarith is that maybe next turn I can like activate Harrier, get a bigger attack in. But it's unlikely to be the case. I think it's gonna stall out a little bit. We just wanna cast creatures and make it so we don't uh, run into removal. A ghoul attacking here, so they could have like a midnight ambush, which could finish off my ruffian if I block. Although that's still going to be effective if it switches to nighttime. Could also be the green pump spell or any number of red pump spells. I think I'm fine to take it since we're pretty far ahead on life total. I 
All right, that also explains it. They were maybe looking for a trade. So now it's a little bit more appealing to activate Harrier, play Liberator. And then my opponent's gonna be pretty much forced to chum block unless they have interaction here. Although it does appear like they have something in hand. Fair enough. Oh, there's still a two. Should be able to take a hit. Hmm. They could have tried to go for an attack and then just burn me out because they had 11 points of trample. So they had 14 damage. I can soak up two. I guess if I had blocked Infiltrator, that would not have worked out for them. Now, good flashback siding. I don't think I'm attacking. Smasher now 6-5. Trap Breaker 3-3. Three, three. So we've got some nice stats. Let's see if I attack with Smasher. It trades for... Well, they could double block 4-4 four, four, and 4-3. Four, but if I attack with everyone, what happens? They can't really afford to double block unless they've got a trick. Yeah, I guess going Sarith to give this Death Touch so they can't eat it is probably the best. The alternative would be to just play Cavalry and not make a crazy big attack. Because then next turn the Trample plus Death Touch is a nice combo. But it feels like this will put them in a position to have to chump or at least trade. And that's going to make it much less likely for them to win the game somehow. Alright. Another one of those. But Death Touch means a bunch of trades happen. Alright. Opponent's definitely still in the game. Ooh, Ignition. Sweet. Yeah, we were one point away from dead to that Moonrager Slash. Alright, time for the final boss. Does that still make me undefeated in Midnight Hunt Premier Draft? I think it does. I probably jinxed it just now, but... Uh, nice opening hand. Harrier into Tracker. We've cast every rare in our deck. So, yeah, can't complain. Good draft. And we've even played all five colors across our two decks. We've got a uh, Tree Folk token to pump up our tracker. Of course, very important once you have a run and seven in play. Silverbolt is good against us. Could blow it up with a Liberator. Although I think I'm happy just uh, playing a Tracker instead. Tracker down.
And then I would really like to draw a land. So probably, hmm. I mean, I could also add a Liberator to the board, which is still good pressure, and then play a Lantern. It's just that uh, I'm not hitting my land drop for the turn. Alternative is play Lantern Activate, but I can sneak Lantern into play if I miss here. Uh, I'll take it. And I'll fetch up my planes. Tamer's a good one. Alright. Is it time to slam run and seven? Or do we wanna maybe lead with the cavalry? If I play Renan 7 and they have removal for my token, it puts me in an awkward position. So I kind of like playing defense first. Candle Trap, that's fine. We still have a nice 5 Toughness blocker here. Perfect to hide behind, and Liberator could even blow up the Candle Trap at some point. But I think it's time. I'm probably fine to it for two. Borrowed time. I might have actually wanted to um, use the Jack or Lantern on their flashback card before they got to untap. Gets rid of the token. Liberator also would have been able to destroy the borrowed time. Okay. Pretty nice hit. So seven mana. Feels like Liberator blowing up the candle trap is a good move. Do I do it now? Yeah, if I go Liberator, sack it. Harrier. I could even keep the Lunar Frenzy up during the opponent's turn. Yeah, that seems fine. I guess I'll attack first, and if they block Harrier, I'm pretty happy for single whites. Don't think there's anything that can really punish me. So if I play Harrier with the intention of blocking Hound Tamer... Alright. And then we'll Frenzy probably for the full amount. Because for single white, white there is a plus two plus two lifelink pump spell. Which I guess doesn't require me to Frenzy for full amount. So, yeah, Frenzy for x equals one is enough. Yeah, it's always a good idea to double check which tricks are available at the start of the format to make sure you're not missing one. It doesn't really cost me much. Alright, and there we go. Clean sweep.
All right, let's claim more prize and crack some packs because I do need more rares for constructed. We'll do them one at a time here. Pack one, pick one. Well, this one's easy. Huntmaster, probably the best rare individually in the set. It is six mana, so compared to other rares you can cast earlier in the curve, it does have some drawbacks, but if you can actually cast it, there's not many better. Slogurk, yeah, not the most exciting card. Just kind of view it as a 3-3 trampler with marginal upside. Don't think you need to build around it too much, but blue-green does have a bit of self-mill synergy, so that could enable it. Silverbolt also quite good, and then the Angler, probably the best common in the pack, besides Silverbolt. So not the most exciting pack. And best Mythic in the set. There's a lot of bombs in the set, that's for sure. Ren and Seven being one of them. So can't really go wrong with uh, many of those. And otherwise, it's uh, a pack with a couple options. Haven't had a lot of experience with Firmament Sage yet. Probably not an amazing uncommon compared to some other cards in blue and black especially. But uh, yeah, the Witch is fine in terms of aggressive two drops and then Evolving Wilds always helpful, even in a two color deck. Burn Down the House is great. The flexibility on what is already a great sweeper just makes it even better. And uh, can maybe set up a nice blue red spells deck. Otherwise, the Scamp for blue black is excellent. And then some decent commons with Burn the Accursed. The Admirer is okay if you need some Reach creatures. And a Pestilent Wolf is also a playable 2-drop. I'll take the Rare Dual Land for Constructed. For Limited, it is probably the Shadow Beast Siding over Sacred Fire. Although Sacred Fire is good, it's just a big, much bigger commitment right off the bat. So pack one, pick one, I think I prefer the Siding. And then uh, the blue cards are also fine. A Willow Geist could be a fun build around. Not a very high pick. So this pack leaves a bit to be desired. Best common in the set, probably Organ Hoarder. It's certainly up there alongside some good removal spells. And then Florian, a nice incentive for the Vampire deck, which I've yet to see an impressive Vampire deck played against me, but I'm sure that those decks exist. Alrighty. So for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.